One of the vital functions of the United States government is to establish and maintain diplomatic relations with other countries. In every friendly and civilized nation in the world, there is an American embassy or legation. Whether it is Paris or Cairo, Shanghai or any other remote outpost, the most reliable and confidential means of communication is the courier service. Armed only with his passport, the courier, like a global postman, delivers the top secret dispatches of our government. Hospital. Now, man. Stephen McQuinn. Profession. Diplomatic courier. I was on my way to Prague, a favorite city of mine once. I was carrying my official diplomatic pouch and uh, one private, unofficial message. I'd had dinner the night before in London with David Innes, the brilliant young British diplomat who had worked in Czechoslovakia the year before. And I promised to deliver a personal greeting from him to a beautiful young lady. Can I speak to Miss Melnick, please? Miss Melnick. Alenka Melnick. Oh. Alenka, come to the door. Thank you. Oh, Miss Melnick? Yes. I'm Steve McQuinn. I was talking to David Innes last night in London. Davy? Yes, when I told him I was coming to Prague, he asked me to look you up. It was very nice of you to come. He, uh, he sent a message, in case you didn't trust me. He said to tell you that he was wearing his wedding ring. Well, thank you, Pan McQueen, for telling me. Sometimes I find it hard to believe we ever were married. We had only two little weeks together, and then... What was it they said he was? Persona non grata? Such an impressive way to tell David that he was no longer wanted. I know you like London. After all, David is there. Yet sometimes I'm frightened. It's not easy to leave one's home for a foreign country. I was born here in Praha. I learned to skate on the Vlatovo when it froze in winter. To carry on in the Loretta Church. Flower markets. Walking in Ventura Square. I shall miss all of these things. But a woman wants to be with her husband. I, um, I don't know how you're going to get out of the country, but uh, be careful. Oh, there will be no danger. I've had a whole year to plan it out. I will go to London as a member of the Czech skating team in the international tournament. And the government is paying your way? Only if I win my event tonight. I must go now. I have to rest. Oh, yes, of course, Please, but... Please, uh... Pamela, you must leave at once. I cannot talk to you now. Your chaperone? Oh, the police. They watch everyone. I'm sorry, you've made a mistake. I'm not the girl you want. Look, make it look good. Slap me in the face. Go on, slap me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I asked if I might trouble you for a match. Now, certainly. If you can make this thing work. Thank you. You're going to announce the results now? Yes. 
Me a cloud that the little blonde girl was with. What about the brunette? Miss Melnick, she will be second. What do you want? I have come to congratulate you. Congratulate me? On taking second place. It is quite an honor among all those contestants. But it does not give me a place on the team. You may go as an alternate. As soon as I am satisfied as to your loyalty. I don't understand. I am held personally responsible for all the members of the winter sports team. I know, Inspector Spalding, but I... I will take no chances. Quite recently, one of our best tennis players fled the country. I do not want to lose a great skater. I would have no reason to desert the team. That is what my investigation will determine. Meanwhile, uh, a certain American diplomat is uh, uh, too obviously welcome here. Coming. Ah, Mr. McQueen. We were just talking about you. Oh? Here is your lighter, sir. I will be leaving, Miss Melnick. We look unkindly on foreign interference with Czech nationals, Mr. McQueen. Why, why did it have to happen? Uh, it's all my fault. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's Dorn's fault. No, it's mine. Look, uh, maybe we can get the British Foreign Office to... No. They can do nothing. It's up to me now. I will go across the border myself. Now, wait a minute. I know a border runner, a man named Olza. He's a specialist in getting people out of Czechoslovakia. Yeah, but how good is he? He is alive. That's his greatest recommendation. But everybody knows your face from all your posters. It's impossible. It's impossible for me to stay here any longer. I have been apart from David for a year now. How much longer can I expect him to wait for me? Well, I guess you know what you want. Can I help? Yes, if you would. They will be watching me. But if you could find out where this man Dolzal is, you'd have to be very discreet. I'll find him. Where do I contact you? Well, my room... No, they would be watching me there. Could you meet me here at 11 tomorrow? There would be no one around at that time. I'll be here. Good night, Mrs. Innes. I'm looking for a travel agent named Dolzal. Oh, I am Dolzal. Come in, come in, don't stand in the door. Impacted wisdom to it. I tell you, the pain defies description. Not one wink of sleep did I achieve all night. And does this iron mugger give me any relief? <laughs> he is a sadist at heart. Look at him. You can tell he loves his work. Uh, my name is McQuinn. I, uh, I phoned you about an hour ago at the travel bureau. It is all right. I often do business here. He is an old friend and a wise man. He sees nothing, he hears nothing, he knows nothing. Merely that he is a specialist in the medieval art of the Spanish Inquisition. I'm told you're a bit of a specialist yourself. Uh, in my line. One is either an expert or he is nothing. So far, you may say I have been lucky, Touchwood. Me, uh, what is the shortest route between Prague and London? Mm. Mm. Vienna. Could you get a young woman there? All my life I have been unlucky with women. Married three times and not one peaceful hour did I have with any of them. Sally Mozzignini, Vitatska Zada. Vepongeli. Pongeli. Czerwicem. Czerwicem. O, nie pan już mówi, nie pan przychodzi we Pongeli. Czerwicem. Look, uh, what about it? 
He is a sadist. He cannot finish until next week. I am a guinea pig for his inhuman experiments. He does not even give me a painkiller. What about the girl? Escapes are more dangerous today. It will cost money. 200,000 coronies, payable in cash in advance. Unless the police arrest me first, who knows? Come yourself. Don't send the girl, no go-betweens. In this business, one is allowed only one mistake. You'll be hearing from me. No hurry. These things take time. Mr. McLean, you are just in time. I'm out of matches again. I was just talking to Miss Melnick. Uh, come in, come in. Hello, Olenka. What are you trying to do to her, Spalny? I think that is a question I might well ask you. Why do you come to see her again? And why here and in such secrecy? All right, the next time I date a girl, we'll meet on the Charles Bridge at high noon and charge admission. Excellent, Mr. McQueen. A very convincing performance. But I wonder if you know that you were followed last night when you visited several very unsavory cafes. Uh, the Prasna Cafe, for example. So I had a night on the town. But the Prasna Cafe, Mr. McQueen, is notorious. Everyone knows it is full of dealers in the black market and border runners. Uh, for whom were you looking? Thomas Masaryk. You are a diplomatic courier. I understand you do your job very well, but you are no match for me at this game. That's because we don't play by the same rules. Then why don't you stop plotting to get Alenka Melnik out of the country? Miss Melnik, I have the pleasure to inform you that you have been chosen for the skating team to represent Czechoslovakia at an international skating competition at Warsaw Pole. You will leave the day after tomorrow. And uh, what about you, Mr. McQueen? Uh, will you be in Praha much longer? No, I'm leaving tonight for Vienna. That is intelligent of you. Uh, perhaps uh, on your next trip, I shall have the pleasure of seeing you again. Not unless you keep my lighter. Oh. Goodbye, Alenka. We have some wonderful tours to Moravia, and there may be snow in the Tatra Mountains. How's the weather in Vienna? Terrible. No tours to Vienna. Absolutely none at all. Look, if the price has gone up... Even if it were a million coronies, I could not get her through. I would have told you so yesterday if I had known who she was. Well, you can't back out now. It's impossible to do anything else. The police are watching. She cannot even get out of Prague. Every station, every airport, all the roads blocked. It would be suicide to try. Well, can you recommend someone else? I could give you the names of the best smugglers in Europe. It would be a waste of time. No one would touch it. Look, you've been in this business long enough to know all the angles. There must be some way. Only a fool would try, and I gave up being a fool after my third wife. Spony's out there, the police. Is there a back way out? It's too late. Behind there. An American came in here a few minutes ago. Where is he? An American? Ah, that accounts for it. He rushed in here and asked if there was a back door. He said he was being followed. But I did not know he meant by the police. No, that I am sure. He rushed out again, uh, like a man pursued by the devil. It is no matter. I am sure I will meet him again soon. Sorry to have troubled you. Oh, no trouble at all. You have been a great help to us, Mr. McQueen. First Alenka Melnick, now this man. 
We have had our suspicions of him for some time. Your presence here confirms those suspicions. Is it illegal in Czechoslovakia to get information on a tour? If the tour is been, yes. I regret to inform you. You are under arrest. If his head aches as much as my tooth, I will be satisfied. I didn't know you had it in you. I had no choice. If they had arrested me, I would have confessed. I cannot stand pain. You're going to wake up eventually. But then I hope to be far away. It is time for me to leave Czechoslovakia. If you're going, you might as well take the girl with you. I might as well put a rope around my neck. You don't need money and a passport in Austria. Miss Melnick's husband is a member of the British Foreign Office. It is well to be practical. Can she be outside the Prasna Cafe in an hour? She'll be there. Mr. McQueen, that shade, did you let go of it on purpose? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I thought so. And Mr. McQueen, pray for us. It is the only thing will get us through. I thought it was phony. Is this his car? Yes, he will not be needing it for a while. Oh, this tooth. It is driving me crazy. You want me to drive? No, no. I want to get as far as possible while there is still some moonlight. Besides, driving distracts me. Be careful. Little... What's that? Unscrew the top, please. Well, picture it. Hey, this is dangerous. You can't drive if you're all doped up. Please. I have been taking them all afternoon. They have absolutely no effect. Then why do you take them? Uh, that sounds like my third wife. In fact, it sounds like all three of them. Give him one, Stephen. Two. You sure you know what you're doing? I'm sure. The bottle, please. Hey, step on it. What did I tell you? As soon as the woman opens her mouth. Doc. If anything should happen to me, in my pocket is a map. On it, a farmhouse marked with a cross. It is on the border. Hold on. Ridley! Ridley! They passed us. Let's go into Lusanne. Rocky. Remembered side road. Dolezal. He has been shot. No, he's all right. He's just full of phenobarbital. Are we far from the farmhouse? I don't know. Let's take a look at his map. Here's the village of Ausik. We passed it ten minutes ago. There's the farmhouse. See that cross? It can't be more than two kilometers away. Here, hold the light. What are you going to do? We've got to get out of here. They'll be coming back. What about him? Hey, Dolazar. Wake up! You must wake up, Dolazar. Uh, uh, well, uh, We're on our way to Vienna. You can live like a king in Vienna. Vienna? You've got a lot of contacts there. You can have any, anything you want. A dentist. Painless. Oh, it is hopeless. There's only one thing to do. Come here, help me. Oh, I'm sorry. I love it, Pete. What do we do now? Walk. Wait. Douse the light, we're getting near the border. Stephen, the farmhouse. I see it. We have made it. We are safe. Thank you. 
I don't speak Czech. You talk to him. I speak English. Oh. Then you know what this is all about. I have been expecting you. We'll be on our way soon. The next patrol passes the checkpoint at 8. Then it will be safe. It's 10 minutes. Must be old Bacek's oldest son. That is right. My house is three kilometers east of here. Hey, that patrol must have passed by now. There is no hurry, my friend. The border is only a few hundred meters away. Well, according to the map, the farmhouse is on the border. Yes. Oh, the suffering has reached staggering proportions. I tell you, I must have a painkiller. There is some slew of it over there. Can't you wait till we cross the border? Schlivowitz, Mr. McQueen. I propose we drink to the climax of a great adventure. Look, you're full of those pills already. Why don't you save that till the job's finished? It is finished, my friend. If you will listen intently, you will hear the cynical laughter of the gods. If you will look at our friend, you will understand the joke. This farmhouse used to be on the border. But farmhouses are easily to move. Who would think moving an old farmhouse would enable us to capture more than 30 political traitors in less than two weeks? And now we have caught Beruste himself, Pan Dalazel. Brilliant, huh? By putting two tractors to work, and pushing an old house two kilometers back from the border. <laughs> sky, sky! We'll not have to wait very long, my friends. Colonel Spolny should join us in a very few minutes. I am sorry for you, Mr. McQueen. I am even sorry for the young lady. For myself, it is the inevitable end of the border runner. Of all the operations I have ever attempted, there is none I would rather have completed. It is bitter to lose with the goal in sight, but we have lost. Let us salute the victor. You can pass me. Shlivovich is for men, not for young ladies who skate. If you think you can make me drunk with one cup of Slivovitz, my friend, I must warn you, you are mistaken. Do not think the matter is ended, Mr. McQueen. There is such a thing as illegal entry. Where are your companions? Companions? I don't see any companions. No, I have not seen any. Are you sure alone? All of them are alone. Joe Vigicati, Prolilati Ogonastic. You will be returned to Praha, Mr. McQueen. Well, I do have to go back to get my diplomatic pouch. Uh, oh, but these uh, fellows, uh, there's a little receipt for you to sign. <laughs> One U.S. diplomatic courier in good condition. These little formalities are important, don't you think? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, tell me, Spolny, are you really unhappy that Alenka got away? I have my job to do. I do my best. Uh, you will need transportation back to Praha. Oh, thank you. Allow me.